Well, amen. Be turning over to page 39 and we'll uh, do this one. I led this in congregational not long ago, how beautiful heaven must be. It's page 39 and we'll sing that together here in just a little bit. And uh, I really found that this, like most of the hymns, had an interesting history, though there are a lot of details that are a mystery. History and mystery. That's kind of the, the theme of some of our old hymns. But let me tell you what I believe. The, there's two passages in the book of the Revelation that I think this song could be based upon, although there's several others. But Revelation 21, 4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. That's Revelation 21, 4. Also, we read in that same chapter in Revelation 21, 23, and this one really reminds us, I think, of this old hymn. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And again, that's Revelation 21 and uh, verse number 23. The text of this old hymn was written by Mrs. A.S. Cordy Bridgewater. And uh, she was born way back in 1873 and died in 1957. Now, the melody, uh, though, was written, uh, well, let me say this. Mrs. Bridgewater was born in North Carolina and married uh, Samuel Bridgewater from Tennessee. couple lived near a place called uh, uh, Hanseyville, Alabama. Is that how you say that, preacher? Do you know Hansey? You ever been to Hanseyville? Never been there. Never been there. Trust you. He'll trust me. They lived there from 1909 to 1917 where um, Mr. Bridgewater farmed. It's believed that she produced the words to how beautiful heaven must be during this time. The Bridgewaters uh, left Hanseyville around 1917 and kind of a mystery. No further details available in that. Now the melody, the tune, was a melody called Beautiful Heaven composed by a man named Andy Pickens Bland. A Texas boy born in 1876 and his parents uh, lived there in Alabama, believe it or not, for six years after his birth, I'm sorry, in Texas before moving to Alabama. And perhaps that's where he made a connection with Mrs. Bridgewater who wrote the poem or the lyrics or the words. And uh, he farmed there in Hanseyville, which is in the Coleman, Alabama area and raised their family. The song uh, with Bland listed as the owner of the copyright apparently was published around 1920, but um, I really was unable to find out what source or what company copy wrote this song originally. Uh, but gospel, Southern gospel style hymns, we'll call them along with biographical material on the authors and composers can be extremely difficult to come by. And I got that information from uh, hymnstudiesblog.com. Now, uh, A.P. Bland, we know this about him, although we know little, he enjoyed singing. Imagine that. He taught a few singing schools. In addition, he served as song direct director. I love the name of this church for the Bethlehem Baptist Church near Hanseyville until his death. Uh, rather, his health began to fail in 1937. That's a lot of what we know about it. And let me say this. This hymn serves as a reminder that uh, I think it does anyway, that you and I walking around here on planet Earth still have a lot of trials and troubles to live with. But, you know, this hymn kind of puts things into perspective. It's not what's going on right now around us. If we know Christ, we have heaven to look forward to. Amen. And let me say this. Um, you know, I've always been puzzled. We don't have a, a, an entire book of the Bible dedicated to what heaven's like. But we read in the Old Testament that I hath not seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that he has prepared for those that love him. So I imagine in our humanity, if the Lord described heaven to us, we couldn't take it in. We couldn't understand. We couldn't do. We, we just couldn't. We're just finite humans. But we have the mind of Christ. And having the mind of Christ, we have enough sense to look forward to it. And know that it's going to be good. There'll be no bifocals, false teeth, or Satan over there. Won't that be good? Won't that be good? But turn there on 39, and I really want you to sing this from the heart. You can remain seated. Uh, we'll sing Mrs. Bridgewater's words.
to the tune of A.P. Bland's beautiful melody, how beautiful heaven must be. We read of a place that's called heaven It's made for the pure and the free These truths in God's word he hath given How beautiful heaven must be how beautiful heaven must be sweet home of the happy and free fair haven of rest for the weary how beautiful heaven must be in heaven no drooping nor pining no wishing for elsewhere to be god's light is forever there shining how beautiful heaven must be how beautiful heaven must be sweet home of the happy and free fair haven of rest for the weary how beautiful heaven must be pure waters of life there are flowing and all who will drink may be free Rare jewels of splendor are glowing How beautiful heaven must be How beautiful heaven must be Sweet home of the happy and free Fair haven of rest for the weary how beautiful heaven must be the angels so sweetly are singing up there by the beautiful sea sweet chords from the gold harps are ringing how beautiful heaven must be how beautiful heaven must be sweet home of the happy and free fair haven of rest for the weary how beautiful heaven must be